right? So let's talk about 30 minute affiliate. Let's talk about uh, structure and strategy for affiliate promotion. So before you even get started, um, you should already be in a communication mode. We talked about that the other day. Build in asking questions of your subscriber list and write to them every single day, provide value every single day, right? That's not a secret. And then um, the key to an affiliate promotion is this, the value you're pr- giving to your client in the promotion. And then you and I should not be dependent on affiliate marketing to meet whatever our goals are, right? So affiliate marketing should be extra. Now, again, I knew, I realize some people make this their full-time, uh, you know, their full-time uh that say their their full time business, but ultimately, if you are a product creator or you are a service provider, then that should be your primary business. Affiliate marketing or affiliate promotion is extra, right? Now, um, it should again, it should supplement your goal because if you do that, you're going to make all the right decisions about how you go about picking affiliate offers. Typically, if somebody has to depend on an affiliate promotion in order to make their money for that month or to make their money for that quarter, they'll promote something that isn't necessarily in their best interest. They'll promote something that's outside of their niche because of the, of the, of the, let's say the bright, shiny object is you can make a lot of money because everybody's making money promoting this. Well, is that, is that going to be good for your, for your subscriber list? And the only, the, and I, the only reason I've, the, the only thing that drives people to make those decisions and, and what I would say would be a way that's contrary to their best interest is that they come to a point in the month or in their business where they need that affiliate marketing in order to make their goal. And I do not think you should be depending on affiliate marketing to make your goal. Okay, so so uh, the, the a good affiliate promotion happens in the thirty minutes you spend every day getting to know and provide value for your client. And so the, one of the best things that you and I can be doing is, is sort of b- before any affiliate promotion, we should be writing to our subscriber list every day, providing value, right? And that typically is going to take you thirty minutes every day to provide something of value. It's going to be worth it when you actually have to do an affiliate promotion. Um, and just be willing to test it over time. And again, I'm just talking in general right now. Um, and then uh, use an autoresponder that tracks your open rate and clicks. The major autoresponders do that. Aweber, get response, constant contact. Now, again, <clears throat> you know, I've heard that it can be difficult until you know how to use them to get into an inbox, but there are ways that you can actually go about email marketing to get into the inbox. We want to talk about affiliate marketing though. And basically, your traffic is going to determine the offers you choose. Who are the people who are already on your subscriber list? Are they buyers? What did they buy? Um, because all subscribers are not created equal to you. And that does not mean that they're not all worth your time. It, it means then that if you have, if you created some software and you built a list of software buyers, then thinking about what kind, you're thinking about the PLR offer that just came out. And you're going to promote it may or may not be the best thing to be doing. And so this is one of those things that we want to sort of think about. How did the, how did the people come onto our subscriber list? And so what can we then do in order to kind of make their lives better based on what they already bought? Um, just because everybody's promoting something already, it doesn't mean you have to do it. And just because everybody's making a lot of money with this one thing doesn't mean you have to do it. Doesn't even mean you should do it. Right. And I've seen this with affiliate marketers. I've seen this with internet marketers. Uh, you, you, you sort of get outside of your lane and then you start promoting things. And then before this is how it comes to the point where a person can start depending on affiliate marketing because it, what ends up happening is you just kind of burn out your, burn out your subscriber list on other stuff. Right. When, when somebody comes to your, to your subscriber list, they came to you because they bought something from you. You sort of understand, you know something about them and you want to, in my opinion, try to stick in that, 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 that frame of reference so you continue to help them for the reason they came to you in the first place. All affiliate offers are not equal. Uh, pick offers based on those that will benefit people in the way you came to know them. Right. So if you came to know them because you uh, provided the service and that service was, let's say, um, that service was doing, uh, installation, right? Continue to pick things that are related to that, right? Continue to pick things that you know, they know based on what they've already bought, 
right? Don't try to guess, right? Because somebody, because you see, uh, you see that uh, there's a big launch, you know, it's, it let's, you know, it's a, it's a big time marketer. They're going to be paying some big time commissions. And I, you know, I mean, there's room for all that, right? There's, we don't have to be, you know, we don't have to be teetotalers. We don't have to be, you know, sort of locked in anything. But what I'm saying to you is that you can, you can be just as profitable kind of focused instead of being all over the place just kind of grabbing something just because something is supposed to make a lot of money there's a there are a lot of ways to make a lot of money in internet, internet marketing um th- those are the part of your opt-in list let's say they didn't buy from you how did the people who got into your opt-in list how they get there Th- that's what you want to start thinking about when you start thinking about what kind of offer you're going to be promoting if you if you know the people how they got to you then picking an offer should not be very difficult. Um, and, and then, of course, it always goes back, comes back down to, right, what, what problems are they trying to solve every day, right? When you know that there is a, you know, there is a, a, a product that will solve a problem that you know the people in your subscriber list are having, um, you need to promote that product. And it really does not matter if there's a launch or not. All that really matters is that you know it and that you know it's going to benefit them, right? So don't, don't, uh, also, you know, don't feel like just because you're not promoting a launch, you're, first of all, you're not going to make any money. That's just not true. I mean, you, you can, you can actually earn as an affiliate and you don't have to promote things that are associated with a launch, right? In fact, you know, in some cases, you're going to be uh, competing against probably nobody, right? On a particular day. So what's a good offer, right? The first question, my first question to you, if you were to sit down to me, you were to ask me what, what a good offer is, I'm going to ask you, well, what's the price point you know your subscriber list to purchase from? And you ought to know that based on what you sold them and what they became part of your list on. What was the price point? Right? You should have a pretty good idea of what the price point is going to be. And look, if something is, is a good offer and you want to promote it and it's way out of your league, then listen. Not way out of your league. That's a bad way to put it. But way out of the price range of the people that are going to be part of your email marketing list. And man, there's no reason necessarily to take a two or three days and promote something that you know is not necessarily going to even be in their, in their, in their, in their uh, price range. You know, if you had somebody come to you from an affiliate marketplace, um, it, it's a good chance you may have success in that marketplace. So in other words, let's say you sold something on Warrior Plus. You, 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 there's a good chance that if you found an offer on Warrior Plus, that offer will work for you. If you launched on JVZoo and that's how they came to you, there's a good chance that if you want to promote something, you can probably find somebody to promote something well on JVZoo. The other thing is now when you when you start doing it, you're going to hear a lot of a lot of words, <laughs> right? People are going to start talking about EPCs. They're going to start by talking about conversion rates, and and quite honestly, folks, those are just words. It's not always going to be the sole thing you and I need in order to make that decision. Because, I mean, the fact of the matter is, I mean, with people going to landing pages first, you and I really don't necessarily have a true picture of the conversion rate of anything as an affiliate. We don't have a, a true picture of, let's say, the EPCs because, again, people are I, – I don't. okay, if I say gaming the system, it sounds negative. It's not. It's not meant to be. It's just that that number is not a true number. The only way you can get that true number is if I sent people exactly from one link to one uh, straight to the offer and they were all going that way. I could make an assessment, but I can't do that because lots of people are going to be coming in different ways. Some people are, some are sending people straight to the offer, right? So, so again, and then, so, so those statistics can be misleading. Now, what you want to do with statistics is you want to look at the trend. And you want to look at how they move. So in other words, it go, goes back to calculus, right? It's, it's, it's moving numbers. So in other words, how do the numbers trend? How do the numbers move? Is EPC going up? Is the conversion rate going up? Is the conversion rate steady? Um, what's happening so that you, so, so, so if you're looking at the trend, I think you can't go wrong, but if you're looking at, uh, at, at exact numbers, you, those can be deceiving. Promote people that are going to take care of your clients, right? D- do that. Um, don't promote anybody that you know is not going to take care of your client. I don't really care how well the product sells. I don't care how cool it is. Um, because more than likely, listen, if you know somebody is just a, just a flat out jerk, they're probably going to treat your client that way. 
and 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 they're gonna if your client ends up asking for a refund, that that's not gonna get you what you want because that's gonna come out of your it's gonna come out of your commission. So so again, you need to you need to start thinking about um, is this somebody I would buy something from? Is this gonna be somebody I would do business with? Because if it isn't, quite honestly, um, if you don't if you don't care much for the person, your client's probably not gonna care much for them either. And and uh, and and those are going to always be the decisions you're going to make, and you end up probably with refund rates that are higher than you'd want to. Yeah, you want people to trust your recommendations, right? So 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 definitely get people that are going to take care of your clients. But even if you even if you think that that's a little too airy fairy, or you think that's a little too, I'd say, uh, Pollyanna, then then do it just for this reason. Get people who are going to take care of your clients because you don't want to deal with refunds coming out of your account, right? So, so again, if, uh, you know, if that's just a little too, you know, pie in the sky, uh, you want people to trust your recommendations, do it then for just the fact that you don't want to have a bunch of refunds. I suggest you get good at promoting a particular kind of offer. Get good at partic- promoting a particular kind of offer. Um, and what that means is that it kind of goes back to, you don't have to promote everything, right? And you, you know, every every day doesn't have to be a home run. So in other words, yeah, you could probably promote a software program um, that, that might be a little questionable and you can make a lot of money on a particular day. But more than likely, you know, if you have a, a subscriber list that you're growing steadily, right? If you sort of build that over time, a little bit at a time, and you sort of, and you look at affiliate marketing as a supplement, then what you're going to do is you're going to make an effort to make sure you understand what people are looking for. You want to, you want to find out what days they're likely to buy. So again, start thinking about if you, if you're going to, if you're going to market, let's say information products about CPA marketing, then, then get good at promoting those offers. Get good at building your list on those offers, right? Get good at understanding what those people buy. Um, what kind of bonuses do those people like? So again, they're gonna they're gonna want a different kind of bonus than let's say a PLR buyer is gonna buy. They're gonna want a different bonus than a software creator is gonna want. They're gonna want a different bonus than let's say an offline marketer. Get good at promoting specific kind of offers. Understand what kind of bonuses they like. Understand this is really important. It's subtle, but you do have to understand it. When you when you develop a relationship with the people that are going to be on your subscriber list, you will start to figure out whether or not you need to be positioning the product or the bonus in your in your either in your email or in your in your uh, your videos. So, in other words, do do the people on your subscriber list do they care more about the bonus that you're giving, or do they care about more about the product? And, and don't what, what I will say is don't become a holy roller on them. So in other words, well, they're just buying for the bonus. So what? Right? I, you know, if, if somebody wants to buy something and they want to get it just for the bonus, please, you know, I've, I've, I've seen marketers, they, they sort of get, you know, sort of in this little high and mighty state. You don't have to do that. It doesn't matter why they want it, right? <laughs> um, um, sell it to them in the way they want to buy it for, for whatever the reason is. And so if you know that the people on your subscriber list want a particular offer because of your bonus, then then don't stop offering them, right? So, so, so again, understand whether or not you need to position the product or the bonus. If people don't care about the product, they're indifferent to that, then position your bonus. You need to understand how much pre-selling you need to do in an email. So that again, see, this really does come back down to getting good at, at promoting a particular kind of offer. Because once you do that, then you do understand when you're going to have to pre-sell. And what happens is when you start getting all over the place, then what's going to happen is, you know, your emails are not going to sound like a newsletter. They're going to just sound like a straight pitch. Nothing wrong with that, but you're not providing any value then, right? So again, how much pre-selling do you have to do in an email based on your knowledge of the product? Uh, I try to do this and, and, and <laughs> I can't even say I do it for, you know, people that promote for us, uh, or promote it for me, right? Um, get information in advance. Try to get it, right? I try to get the information in advance. Um, uh, because what you, you have to do, you need to, you need, you need a little time to kind of develop your promotion. So you need to understand what the product is about. Um, 
Now, if you can get a review copy, get one. It's not super important. I used to think that I needed a review copy, and sometimes I still will so that I can review it and then figure out what the what the premiums are going to be. But I like, to, I like to at least see it. Sometimes you can pretty much do it with the 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 JVs sort of uh, with with their writing about what's in it, right? Um, so so if they if they don't have the product ready. I mean, don't really feel like you have to have it. It's not super important, but if you can get a review copy, get one. Um, you want to know basically what's inside. That's what you really want to know. Um, and then you want to focus on what's in there that will help people that are buying it. Um, one question I always try to ask is, is there a particular part of this that's underappreciated? In other words, the marketer themselves don't really know what they've produced. In other words, they, they put this thing together, but there's one part of it that's really cool. And they didn't give it any emphasis, right? So it's underappreciated. Is there something in the package that's going to surprise them, right? So so again, get, if you get information on that in advance, that's the kind of stuff you want to put in your promotion. Internet marketing is a very small community. And the likelihood that if you're promoting something that somebody else is going to be promoting it too you do need to stand out, right? You do need to stand out. Is there something in there in the package that's not in the copy, right? Nobody's perfect, and some people leave stuff out. And you get in there, if you get a chance to see it, then what you can do is you can emphasize that thing, and you can emphasize what's in there in a way that other people are not. And what that's going to do is that's going to cause you to put some kind of additional premium or bonus based on something that's not in the copy. And that's going to make your bonus unique, right? So that kind of brings me to the other point that I really want to make, and that is to find premiums. Find premiums, really and truly. Bonus incentives matter. They do, right? And so um, I think you do need to spend money up front to have, uh, to have nice premiums, right? So if you're, if you're going to be involved in internet marketing, you're going to be involved, you're going to build a list, uh, go ahead and spend some money for some nice premiums. For, to give people, right? Make sure you get, you know, make sure you get the rights, uh, the, the rights to it. But, but go ahead and spend some money, be, because if you, if you want, if you want to make money as an affiliate marketer, then you're going to have to create some value. And sometimes the only way to create that value is, I mean, you can talk all day long about the product, right? I mean, you can do sales videos. You can tell them how it's going to make their life wonderful, and none of that's going to matter, right? Sometimes the only thing that really matters is the incentive you give them. Try to purchase bonuses. And when I say premiums, I mean bonuses. Try to purchase things you know people in your niche are not going to have. Right? Try, try to find something that you know, right? You found this thing and you just have not seen them on the bonus page. Try to get, try to buy those things. And sometimes you can go and buy them from people and you don't really even have to buy them in a launch or anything like that. You can just kind of go ask them and then give them a price for it. Right? So I, you know, I do that all of the time. I'll go to someone and I'll say, hey, you know what? Um, I want all of this stuff. How much for it? Right? How much for it? And, and again, so, so, somebody's probably going to say, no, uh, you know, you're crazy. Um, it's, here's my sales pages. But sometimes people will say, you know what? I'll give you all this stuff for X. Right? So again, um, try to buy the things that you know people in your niche won't have. Um, if you're buying something from a membership, just just consider this more likely people a lot of people are going to have the same bonus right just just so you'll know so so uh you know there are a lot of great memberships i'm part of them um but but the the bonuses are then going to be common the affiliate will sometimes give you bonuses that you can use don't rely on those right because again if you think about it everybody's going to see those on somebody else's landing page so don't don't reply don't rely solely on the bonuses that the affiliate gives you I did. I, I think I just said this. Make sure you understand the rights you're giving. So just because you got the rights doesn't mean you can pass on the rights. Um, typically, sometimes even the master resale rights certificates don't necessarily mean that you can pass on master resale rights. So do what you can to understand your rights. Do what you can to then understand what rights you can pass. This is really important, actually, um, and because you want to pass on the rights uh, in in the in the right. Uh, manner to the person that's going to be buying and you don't want to de devalue your own promotion right now um if if, if you're going to if you're going to have bonuses and they they do come with some kind of graphics in general 
if you have time, redo those graphics, right? So if you, you want to, you know, redo the, the e-cover, redo the banners, right? If you have time, uh, redo, redo all of it if you have time. And this, this also goes back again to, you know, writing every day, number one, number two, uh, getting stuff in advance, right? So if you get stuff in advance, you're going to have plenty of time to put together a decent promotion. And also, you know, if you're not dependent on, on every promotion that comes in your niche in order for you to make, uh, let's say make your money, you can pick and choose the ones that are really going to, first of all, make you the most money. And second of all, are going to really benefit the people the most. And typically those are going to be one and the same, right? The people, the things that people uh, benefit with the most by, Right, are probably going to be the things that are going to make you the most money as an affiliate. So you want to be thinking about that. And, and if you have to, again, if, if you're dependent on that affiliate money to make your goal, you got to change the equation so that your, your decision making will be right. Okay. Anytime you're going to put, add a bonus, I mean, it ought to fit that angle you're taking. So if you're going to, you're going to take the angle that, um, you, hey, you need to, you need to take this and you're going to become, yeah, you're gonna become a you're gonna run your own plumbing, you know, business. Right? Let's just say that that's the angle you're gonna take. Then all your bonuses should be in line in helping that person run their own uh, plumbing shop. Um, your bonuses should fit the offer you're promoting. So in other words, uh, you know, this is a, it's a it's a, you're promoting a Facebook Live product, and you've got a YouTube Live bonus. No, no, no. Please don't do that. Uh, products that people have purchased in the past, right? It should be. It, it, it should fit the products people have already purchased. If you know they like stuff, or if you know they like a certain kind of stuff, then then listen, that's the kind of bonuses you want to be in the business to buy, and then you want to pass that stuff on to the people that are going to be buying through your affiliate link. Buy the stuff they like, right? Buy stuff they enjoy. And I, I like using the word enjoy. I don't like using the word need. Right? When you're an affiliate marketer, do you understand um, what we do is is not... I, I, it's really, it, it's really, it, it's really so much about, uh, I'd say enjoyment, right? At some level. And so you want to picture your client or your customer enjoying what it is you're going to be promoting, what it is you're going to be buying. Uh, think about, about the fact they're going to be enjoying it. And when you start thinking about what kind of bonuses to add to something, right? Think about the kind of thing that when they get it and they download it, it's going to be enjoyable. Not, oh, do they need it? And now are they gonna, you know, are they gonna, uh, are they gonna use it? And, you know, using it, needing it, that's great, right? They're, those are good talking points. And most people don't buy because of they, because they, because of what they need, right? They don't buy the thing. We, none of us buy the stuff we need. We, we buy the stuff we want, right? For whatever reason. So try to think about stuff that people are really gonna enjoy when they get it. Use a landing page. And Jeff, we, Jeff and I, you know, we talked about this a little bit today. Use a landing page. On that landing page, I suggest you do a video review. Is it overkill? Maybe. And some people will tune it out and some people will turn it off. Fine. Wonderful. I don't care if they turn it off. Uh, but the, the video review is going to be for those people who do not want to look at all your images. They want to be able to just sit down, watch your video, or even listen to you. And then um, you're going to just, you're going to talk about what it is they're going to do. Now, when you start talking about doing a video review, you can re just review your bonus, right? So in other words, it's not about the product. It's about your bonus. So during your sales video, people get to your landing page, review your bonus, right? You don't have to review the product, review your bonus and how it fits into what the product is doing. You can also review the product and how people are going to benefit. Now, again, that's a choice. You can do either one, and whichever one is going to fit the list that you have. Um, and then do a video review of why either one of those things are going to benefit the client or both of them. Right? The bon review your bonus, review the product. But, but uh, I and I said this yesterday that a landing page video, and especially for an affiliate promotion, remember they're going to leave your landing page. They're probably going to go and see another sales video. Please do not go beyond three minutes. Right? Really, one or two minutes is more than adequate. One minute is best. If you're going to do a, a video review, you're going to auto play the video when they get to your landing page. Please try to keep it right close to one minute. Whatever you do, so it doesn't leave a lot of time for you to, uh, you know, oversell something. Cause, it, cause you, you're really dependent, um, you, you're really dependent on the person, 
that is going to you, you, you're dependent on the person that's going to let, let's say they're, they're 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 going to go ahead and make the purchase at that point, right? So 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 again, your 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 review you're dependent on the person who is doing the sale, right? That's what I want to say. So in other words, you decide to promote a product, right? You decide to promote an affiliate marketing offer. And so what you want to do is you, you want to be dependent on that person to make the sale. Now, if you think that person didn't do a good job on their sales page, then you might have to do more on your bonus. You might have to do more on your landing page. If you look at that sales page and they did a, they did a crappy job, then what you got to do is you've got to get enough momentum, right, based on your bonus and your emphasis of the product in your bonus. Right, so it's not just about what they're going to do. Now, if they're doing a great job on the sales page, what you're going to do is you're just going to say, "Hey, you know what? Uh, here, here's here's our here's our bonus. You just send them over there." In fact, in some cases, you don't even have to do a sales video if that's the case. They've already done a great job on the sales page. I'm gonna I, I talked about this before. Use 3D images on your sales page on your bonus page. Um, be clear in your call to action. Be careful about the words. On your, on your button, be, be specific. You can put, uh, for instance, in optimized press, you can change the words on the, on a, uh, on the button. You can do continue. You can do download now. You can do access now, right? Um, be, be specific about what you want them to do. Again, I'd like to use the word continue. They came to the landing page. And what I'm trying to do subtly in the back of the person's mind, I don't know if it matters, matters. But again, I want them to continue. I want them to keep going. I want them to keep moving and then go on to look at the, at the landing page, at the, uh, at the sales page. Continue, right? If you want, if you want them to down, if you want to, want them to have download now, be specific about that. Make sure that everything else on your landing page sort of leads them to want to download now. Again, be specific about your call to action. If all you're going to have on your on your bonus page or your landing page is going to be a button, then that button has the words with a call to action. Now, again, if you're going to have a button, make sure you have something on that button. Right? Now, I've seen some cases where somebody will leave the words off the button thinking it might be too much. It is not too much. It is, it is necessary. You must put the call to action on there, and it must be crystal, 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 quadruple clear. Right now, um, and, and so, and having said that, right, when you start talking about a bonus page and a landing page, n- not a lot of words, folks, and I've learned this the hard way, you don't want to have a lot of words on there because all the, a lot of words do is really slow people down, and a lot of words will get people reading about stuff that may or may not be relevant. The more talking you do, <laughs> um, the more, the, 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 the higher the probability that you and I will say something that will slow somebody down and will keep them. Do you know, do you realize, and I didn't even know this because I, I, I'm not a natural salesperson and I didn't know this until I, you know, started talking to friends. How many of you all know you can talk somebody out of a sale? You can talk. I mean, you can be, you can be talking, you can be doing your best sales job and you can talk them right out of a sale. So I'm saying to you, your job on that landing page is to get people to the sales page with momentum, right? Again, so what's the momentum depend on? Well, I, if, if the moment, the momentum depends on this. How good a job did the vendor do on their sales page? If they did a crappy job, then you got to generate the momentum. If they did a great job, then you got to move them quick. The momentum is going to be depend, determined by the person who created the offer. Wait, does that make sense? I know I kind of blew through that. So if you get that, put the number four in the question box. If you sort of get that concept, right? So again, th- what you're doing on the landing page is you are generating, you are generating momentum. Jeff's question is, how about if they overdid the sales page? 15 minute sales videos times two, right? Yeah, I, you know, I typically when somebody does that, they, they feel they've tested it. And, and everything's going to come back down to you got to have a lot of trust in that in that person, and you got to have some trust that 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 they're gonna that if you send visitors there, they're they're not going to get talked out of it, 
right? So, so if, if you trust them that they did test it, that it's not just them kind of going, running off at the mouth, then I would say then it's good. Then, then you gotta move them fast off the, um, you gotta move them fast off the, off the, off the landing page, right? So, the, so, so in other words, you can't have them spending a lot of time. They gotta, they've gotta get a clear picture of your premium or your bonus and move quickly on to the sales page and let them do the sales job. Your job is to let them see stuff fast and get them off of there, especially if they're, if they're going to have a 15-minute sales video. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, okay, yeah, Ever Funnels. I, I haven't heard of it. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, the folks who did Ever Lesson, I think that is, yeah? Um, yeah, 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 right. Um, yeah, oh, so that's probably Chad Nicely, and Chad Nicely does long sales videos. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I, uh, yeah, I don't, you know, I, I have not sent people the long. I don't think I have, right? I don't think I've sent people to long sales version, right? I, to, to sales videos. So, so I don't, I don't know that. Um, I, I don't, I don't know that I've, I've, I've promoted somebody with long sales videos. I don't know that I have. It's not that I won't. Right. So, uh, so, so yeah. Yeah. No, um, um, I, yeah, I, 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 I may, I may think about doing something like that is, uh, and, and, and I may not. Yeah. Um, Dan says it's the same as ever lesson with the funnels added in. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, um, it's, it's an interesting thing, right? Um, I'm, I'm probably going to stick, stay old school and stick with optimized press. <laughs> um, I, I, I am, I'm still, I think I'm just married to optimized press. And so, you know, it's kind of like, well, they, as they say, uh, you know, it's kind of, they say it's, uh, you stick to, st- dance with the one that brought you there. So, um, but yeah, so, so, so when you're promoting as an affiliate, go light on the number of words. Don't have a lot of words on your, on your, on your landing page, regardless. I don't think, I don't, I don't even know what the, I don't care what the occasion is. You don't need a lot of words on there because you got to get people off of there onto the sales page. And, and this is just this is just my own personal opinion. Uh, I don't like putting people on bonus landing pages, right? Because the the internet marketing community, especially those of us who are in the business opportunity niche, right? Um, we are a diverse group. And if you put, I mean, if you put this, let's say, you know, if you put, let's say, a business dude, right, in a suit and tie, on your landing page. My, uh, someplace in the back of my mind, I'm telling you, it's just going to turn me off, right? It's going to turn some people off. It's going to attract some people. And so I just, I don't think you ought to be using people at all because people just kind of have this, it, it's all psychological. It's all going on in the background. They don't, they're, you and I are not even conscious of the decisions we're making, right? That's proven. And we see a person, how they're dressed, um, what they're doing. All of that has an effect. And unless, you think that that person is helping your customer. I don't think you need people on there. It's not because really and truly what we're trying to do, unless you can very clearly put people on it. So this was in a, um, a course I took, I don't know, back in 2010, a guy named Mike Hill, he did something called CPA tsunami. And, and, and he said, all of the statistics say that, um, when you can put somebody in the goal position in, in a picture, that works, right? And so that's why if you – and the people who are, are really good at this, unfortunately, are, are not always going to be internet marketers, information marketers. We're the worst at it. The people who are really good at this are um, <clears throat> are multi-level marketers. Right. And sometimes when you get to one of those landing pages, do you know why I have all those corny looking people? And it's like a bunch of them on there and they're all smiling. They're all at the beach. That's because it's all work. It's not because it's not conscious, right? It's psychological. It's all working in the background. That's why they put a bunch of people on there. Cause they're trying to cover all the bases, right? They're trying, right. They're trying to peel it. They're trying to let you, let you see everybody. So that you find yourself when you look at that picture and then you see them in the goal position. So in other words, you want to see them. After they bought the product, you want to see them happy and vacationing and spending lots of money and, you know, all that stuff. Right. And, and, and we get some of it. Sometimes we think that we get turned off. When we see a big car in the background. Right. They're a little more upfront about it. 
but and I'm not to please don't think I'm telling you to put all that stuff on your on your bonus page. I'm telling you not to put that stuff on there. But I'm saying if you must put this stuff on there, make sure that you're careful to put people in the gold bonus position and try to cover all the bases. Listen to people, listen to feedback, right? Listen to people pe- to feedback when you start doing affiliate marketing. Um, what are people saying about your promotion? People will tell you. Right? What are people saying about your bonus? Are they asking questions? Because if people aren't even asking questions about it, then it may not be exciting enough, <laughs> right? It, 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 and, and again, um, it, it, ought to, it, it ought to make somebody ask you, hey, hey is this bonus going to be available, let's say, in a week? If, if, you, if you start getting questions like that, you know you put together the right thing. Right? If you don't hear anything and nobody cares and people are kind of going to your landing page, they're not even going on to the sales page, you need to, you need to, you need to spruce it up a little bit. Right? And again, um, people will tell you why. And again, this does kind of go to what Jeff was saying. You want to be watching your statistics. If people are going to your landing page and they're not going on to the sales page, it's probably because you didn't generate enough momentum. But you didn't, you didn't give them something exciting enough to move on off your landing page. And so, and so if you start looking at your stats and you say, boy, man, I had, had a hundred clicks to the, to the bonus page and I only had one click to the, to the sales page. Something is wrong with your landing page, right? Something is wrong with your sales video. Something's wrong on that page that, di- that people just didn't feel like, you know what? It's not even worth my time to go look at this. And so you, you got to get them off of there. And so your bonus will typically do that if it's exciting enough. What are people telling you about your sales video? Right? Are people watching the sales video? Do they remember what you said in it? Do they remember the details you offered in it? Do they remember the things that you said? If they're not, if you're, you're not hearing anything, it doesn't mean, it, it probably means then that people are dismissing it. They're turning it off. They don't want to hear it. Right? And, and, and so again, that sales video needs to be, uh, an ally. It needs to be a, a, a partner to what's on your bonus page. But, you know, it can be an impediment if it's slowing people down, right? Again, everything in your bonus page ought to speed up the process because if it's not, right, then, then you've got too much of something or not enough of something else, right? Are people reading your email, right? So you can, you can get a sense for whether or not people are reading your email. Do people quote you back? Are you, are you, if you ask for feedback, are you hearing from people to write you back? Whatever so often. Right, even when you do an affiliate promotion or the days you're not doing affiliate promotion, you should, you should be asking for feedback for people to write you back so that you can get a sense for whether or not people are reading your email. Excuse me. Because if you're not, again, that, that means then that you've got to get people to start reading. You've got to start digging deeper to get people into what you're saying. Do people care? And again, I said this before. The last thing is, do people care about your bonus? Because if nobody cares, about it. It's probably not, it's not, probably not exciting enough. It's probably not a bonus. And, and again, in this age where people are stockpiling stuff, right, that's not always going to be the thing. Sometimes it is. Sometimes people care about the stuff and you need to stockpile stuff. But sometimes what you really need to do is kind of give some thought to a narrative, try to figure out what people are trying to become, and then you want to put your bonus on that. Because trust me, when you were competing against other affiliates, most affiliates are are pressed for time, right? And I and I and I shouldn't say this, but most affiliates um, are probably going to put their, together their promotion about an hour before it, hour before the launch, right? But you can beat any affiliate if you if you know about it ahead of time, if you put a little time into it. You put a bonus page together, you do a bonus video, and you do some other graphics, you are probably going to outperform most people, even if you don't have as much traffic. Right? Even if you don't. Right? And, 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 and it is, it is, it is a, it, and I, I don't know why that is, it just is. Right? So, 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 so again, put something together that people are going to care about. 